Namaskar and welcome to Curries with Bumbi. Today I have come with a delicious recipe that you can serve as an appetizer or snack or as a side alongside your main meal. Along with that, I will show you how to make the red sweet and sour chutney that you often see served at restaurants. But I will show you how to make it the easy way. We will first make two spice powder blends. The first one is just plain and simple dry roasted cumin powder. I took about a tablespoon of cumin seeds, toast them on medium to low heat by stirring them continuously. Please do not do any other thing than staying beside the pan and stirring continuously whenever you are roasting any spices. The last thing you want is your spices to burn because then you have to discard them all and start over again. And who wants to do that? When you start getting a nice smell and the cumin seeds look a bit more brown in color, immediately transfer them onto a plate or into a mortar and pestle. Grind them to a powder, but don't make too fine a powder. Going to the next spice blend. 1 tablespoon of coriander seeds, 1 tablespoon of cumin seeds, half a tablespoon of fennel seeds, a fourth of a teaspoon of black peppercorns, and a dry red chili from which I have taken out all the seeds. Roast the spices on medium low heat until it smells divine. And when you see the seeds starting to get a little tinge of brown color, take them out onto a bowl. Let them cool down completely and then grind in your mortar or pestle with a little bit of salt or use a spice grinder. Next, let's make the red sweet and sour chutney. I have soaked 5 large dates in boiled hot water for about half an hour. Please do not forget to remove the seeds if your dates are not pitted. Add about half a cup of water and blend to a smooth paste. Now here comes my easy way. I use tamarind concentrate. Or else you need to soak tamarind in hot water, take out the pulp, strain it. I'm too lazy to do all that. I added about half a cup of water to the jar to get all that goodness. Then the pureed dates go in, half a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of Kashmiri chili powder and about half a cup of sugar. Then a heaped teaspoon of Amchur powder that is dried mango powder. You can use less sugar than the stated proportion. You can always add it later if you want more. If you do not get Amchur powder, do not worry. Add about a teaspoon of lime or lemon juice at the end. With a stirrer, mix well and allow this to come up to a boil. Once it comes up to a boil, add a teaspoon of dried ginger powder and keep it on medium heat till it starts to thicken up a bit. Remember, it thickens up more once it cools down. After about 15 minutes, the chutney looks perfect. Add the roasted and ground cumin. Do a taste test and if you feel it is too sour, add more sugar. For me, this is perfect. Let it cool down completely, then transfer into an airtight glass jar and store it in the refrigerator. It stays good for more than 6 months in the fridge or indefinitely if you store it in the freezer. Though I have got a video on different ways to make a green chutney, I will show you another one today. In your blender jar, add coriander leaves, mint, little bit of ginger and just a fourth of a teaspoon of roasted cumin seeds. Then a green chili which is optional. Add a few ice cubes. This prevents the chutney from getting brown. A teaspoon of lemon juice, little bit of salt and half a cup of water. Now today I am using some roasted chickpeas but this is optional. And I would highly recommend watching my other video on making a simple green chutney. I will leave the link in the description box. You can also use toasted pumpkin seeds in place of roasted chickpeas. Or you can use roasted cashew nuts or peanuts, whatever you like. Let's make the potato tikkis now. Use the larger holes of the grater. I boil the potatoes the previous day I plan on making these. And then keep the potatoes in the refrigerator overnight. In this way, your tikkis will never break, nor will they turn sticky, and they will turn super crispy. I always use russet potatoes for making aloo tikkis, the ones that you use for roasting or making french fries. The other varieties turn out to be too sticky. 
Then I added 4 tablespoons of cornstarch, about a little more than half a teaspoon of salt, then 2 heaped teaspoons of that spice blend powder that we made earlier. You can store the rest in a small airtight jar in your refrigerator and use it in making any vegetable curry. Keep a bowl of water handy so that you can dip your fingers in it if they get sticky. Ok, here they are. I like dusting some cornstarch on them very lightly. This will make the tikkis extra crispy. Dust off any excess flour or else your oil may turn dirty. The oil should be hot but not smoking hot. Gently slide each tikki into the oil and fry on medium heat. Do not fry on high heat. They need to get that browning gradually. Only then they will turn crispy. Turn them when they start getting golden brown on one side. Again turn when the other side turns golden in color. Then with the back of your spatula gently flatten each one of them. And this step makes them super extra crispy. You can skip this step but if you like them to be crispy then this step will make you very very happy. You can form the balls and then keep them in the refrigerator. Then just before your guests arrive or just before serving fry them. They are very crispy when freshly fried but after an hour or so they will start losing their crispiness. But my friends I am telling you they still taste great at room temperature. You can also fry in very less oil. But remember then they won't be as crispy. Or you can brush them with oil and air fry them as well. And look at this deliciousness. Mr. Potato is at his best appearance today on Bumbi show. Now ladies and gentlemen, let me allow you to hear the crispy sound effect in YouTube style. Okay, how did that sound? That's the social media way of depicting crispiness. Isn't that true? Okay my friends, serve this with the chutneys or any dip of your choice or maybe a raita. Do whatever you like but please try this recipe and send me your feedback. And please do not forget to click that like button and please do leave a comment for me. Bye bye.